Um, thank you for this. Uh, could you tell us about your field of expertise, like what languages and writing systems you study and aspects of reading that you're interested in? I've mostly been working on German orthography uh, and comparing German uh, reading acquisition and spelling acquisition in German with other orthographies, mostly obviously with English orthography, as most research is on, on English orthography. Um, so we started our research by sort of comparing whether reading acquisition and dyslexia is the same in German as in English, uh, as it was published at that time. And is it? Uh, partly, um, not completely. So there are many similarities, more similarities than differences, but there are critical differences, uh, at least in my perception. So in German orthography, uh, German language is very similar to English. Uh, that's ideal from a research perspective, because what we've done again and again is to select words and stimul reading stimuli that can be matched across the two orthographies. Many words are re have really the same stem and are very similar and have the same meaning. So that's what we've used for our research. Uh, what is different between German and English is the consistency of the grapheme phoneme correspondences of the letter sound rules. German is a very transparent orthography in the reading direction. So that's the major difference really to English. In German you can, you can always resort to a sounding out strategy. German is less consistent in the spelling direction, which I think is a characteristic of most alphabetic orthographies, um, even English. <laughs> um, in the spelling direction, German is inconsistent. It's still not irregular. So the only irregular words that we have in, in German are mostly foreign words, mostly English words anyway, that just do not adhere to the grapheme phoneme correspondence rules of German. Uh, spelling is inconsistent, uh, so it's it's harder than reading, uh, but it's still regular. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, I would like to know about the context in which children learn to read where you are. So you're mostly studying children in Austria, also Germany, or mostly Austria. So please tell us yeah. something about the it's context. It's mostly Austria, but I think in in, the, in that part of the world, there are many similarities in the educational systems. Um, so I guess like the major difference to, again, the English context is that reading preparation before school is rather unusual, at least so in the kindergarten system, it's, it's a garden, it's, uh, the, the system focuses on playing and social development. Mm -hmm and letters and numbers are more for school. So many kindergartens until today, it's slightly changing, but many kindergartens until today say, no letters for our kids, that's what they do in school. So reading preparation is still pretty different. So formal reading uh, instruction starts in primary school, which is uh, at the age of six. Mm -hmm. um, and most schools adhere to a very phonics approach to reading instruction, so the children would learn uh, letter sound correspondences and at the same time to sound out these letter sound correspondences. Okay. Um, yeah. and do they have to learn other languages? Is there anything about dialect or bilingualism? That, uh, and how does that work? Um, German has many different dialects. Um, that's not really recognized in, in reading instruction. So reading instruction, the only written language is really the standard German language. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the uh, language that children speak when they enter school may be quite different from the language they learn to read and spell. Uh, but, you know, in modern times, they're all familiar with standard German, although they may not speak it. Uh, the books that they were, that the parents read to them, the TV programs, the movies, that's all standard German. So they, they, they are familiar with the language, although their articulation, their words may, may partly be different. That's not such a major issue. Can I just follow up on that? So, um, so do most of the children speak a dialect that is different from standard German and is that different in grammar or pronunciation or vocabulary? There's really a wide variation. Okay. It can vary in, mm -hmm. in everything. Uh, it depends on the dialect, but okay. on every single language level you get variation uh, mm -hmm. within the German dialects. And do they have to learn other languages? 
like uh, French or English or anything? English uh, is, uh, I think, the, the formal instruction of English starts mostly in secondary school when they're 10. Mm -hmm. um, but primary schools try to introduce, you know, some spoken language to familiarize children with, you know, some English songs, English vocabulary. They're not supposed to present uh, orthography, written words in English. It's just to get familiar with the pronunciation. Okay, good. Um, thanks. And what does it take for children to learn to read in terms of basic skills or teaching techniques? Is there anything you want to highlight that's particularly important there. Sounding out. That's yes. really the whole business and okay. that especially in German this is such an important skill because once children are able to sound out they are independent readers. They mm -hmm. can work out every single word and then they can get the reading experience that they need so much. So this is really the crucial element to get them to sound out first short syllables and then longer and longer words which is really important in German because we have quite long words due to morphological processes, so word length is, is really an issue that can be quite hard for the poor readers, but it's really learning letter sound knowledge, which is not such a major problem. I think those children who, after a few weeks in school, it turns out that they can't memorize the letters, that they can't learn the letters very well, I think their major problem is mostly that they don't really understand what they're doing with the letters. They're not getting the letter sound correspondences, the association with the spoken, what, what does it have to do with my spoken language? So there's the, you know, relation to phonology and phonological awareness. Okay. So the children that we worry about are those who cannot sound out after like three or four months in school, at least short, simple words with a few letters. By then, most children have not learned all letter sound correspondences. It's no longer true that you learn the 26 letters of the alphabet and then you start sounding out. Actually, in, at least in Austria and I think in most parts of Germany as well, the alphabet is not taught in school. They learn it on a, some, sometime in grade two. Uh, but it's, it's not really considered an important skill for reading. It's an important skill to then look up a dictionary, obviously. Oh. But for reading, it's not really important to learn the letters in this in this special sequence. So you point to a letter and then the child knows the sound. Is that how it works? Yes. Okay. Most children would, that's actually, thank you for that remark, that's important. They learn letter sound correspondences, mm -hmm. uh, not letter names. Yeah. Again, in, in German that wouldn't make so much difference for vowels, letter name and letter sound are identical. Anyway, for consonants the letter names are quite similar to the letter sounds but nevertheless even the parents are really instructed to not use letter names during the uh, when the child is learning to read but really to focus on letter sounds okay, that's good. Um, so is there anything that you want to highlight that's particularly easy or hard about learning to read in I guess what's easy compared to the inconsistent orthography of English is to learn to sound out. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually it really doesn't take them very long, two to three months, then they have the basic alphabetic principle and they have a basic understanding what reading is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's only the first step. Uh, so it's, it's not the major hurdle as it was often uh, presented in English. Mm -hmm. They can do that, most of them can do that quite easily. Uh, the hard bits of German are the long words, to read long words, to segment them into their morphological constituents, into the word parts. German is a very rich morphology, both inflectional morphology, so you always have these prefixes and suffixes that you need to work out, and especially the compounding uh, can be pretty extreme, so we just put all the words together into one long word, and that makes the reading process then very hard. And the other uh, thing that's that's difficult for struggling uh, children is spelling. Uh, for a long time, dyslexia in Germany and Austria was actually conceived as a uh, perceived as a as a spelling problem, because mm -hmm. uh, most children, you know, they read they read slowly. So reading speed is a uh, reading fluency is a major issue. They read very slowly, but they can read pretty much every text if you give them enough time, mm -hmm. uh, but spelling uh, problems are highly persistent and usually are still there in uh, adults. Okay, good, good. Um, do, you, do you teach in terms of word families, because the, go, going back to the morphological structure, um, is that an important aspect? 
of teaching in the early grades or not really? Mm, I think there's a huge variability then how teachers really approach this. Uh, it's I don't think it's typical. So there are t uh, teaching strategies that would focus on word families, especially for spelling. So uh, some teachers would would use such approaches. Uh, others really focus more on the you know phonological parts sounding out for reading that's it for reading then you practice and it's reading fluency okay. and for spelling the other approach is also more phonology a uh, rule based approach that you try to teach the uh, the the inconsistencies of german orthography by making spelling rules explicit but then the problem is that the spelling rules are inconsistent so there are many different ways to to mark a short or long vowel in german orthography so you can have a double for a short vowel you can have a double consonant or two different consonants uh, for a long vowel that's the harder one you can have either vowel doubling or uh, the vowel is followed by a so-called silent h a silent letter uh, or no marking at all uh, okay. is often uh, sufficient to mark a long vowel so the rule based approach actually has limits yes yes and then it's word learning okay that's it. and teaching of fluency is there any special technique you recommend or just practice, practice, practice. exactly get them interested in reading uh, and that's one of the problems that obviously those who have a hard time to do this decoding thing at the beginning they have more important they're more interested in other things they're yes. not really the most motivated readers, and then they like uh, they miss out on the reading experience, especially those kids who need it most. Right. Um, okay. So David Sher talks about Anglo Anglocentricity uh, in studies of literacy, and I'm wondering whether there are elements of reading and writing um, that you've talked about that are not covered in the so-called standard model, which is often the English model. Um, <clears throat> I guess what we've, I mean, German is relatively close to English, mm -hmm. uh, but still sort of this over -reliance. so phonological awareness, phonological processing is terribly important in order to learn alphabetic languages. If you don't understand the phonological structure of your language, uh, you can't really read an alphabetic orthography, it's not going to work. Uh, but what we've realized is that this is not the major hurdle. So. Um, and even even our teachers then started to do phonological awareness trainings with the children, but that's only the very first step. So some children really need it in the first weeks of reading acquisition, but later on it's usually not what they need. They have worked out the phonological structure, and then we should move on to the next step, to the morphological level. Um, I perceive that reading research is going in that direction anyway, in mm -hmm. all orthographies. I guess it's more different, uh, difficult from the research point of view because on the phonological level we all have pretty much the similar sounds in, our, in, in the spoken languages that we've uh, done research on so far. But on the morphological level there are serious differences. Like most, again, most languages have, a, many languages have a richer morphology than English where inflectional morphology is relatively reduced. So I think this, we should do more of this type of research. Interesting, okay, thank you. And um, I guess anything else that you want to mention that's particularly salient, especially for people just all around the world wanting to learn about reading and writing in German? Um, not sure whether that's specific to German, but what, what we've done lately is to look at dissociations between reading and spelling. Mm -hmm. I find that highly interesting from the word processing point of view view written language processing uh, so I guess we've realized a long time ago that there are children who, whose reading is coming along well but the spelling is behind they have isolated spelling problems mm -hmm. but quite interestingly our data now consistently show that the dissociation can go in the other direction as well children whose spelling develops according to the curriculum you know their spelling uh, tests are fine but their reading is seriously uh, delayed. And I find, especially this dissociation, I find really interesting and really surprising uh, because what it shows is for a long time we assumed that the slow readers, poor reading in, in, in consistent orthographies like German is usually disfluent reading, very slow reading. Um, so for a long time we've always assumed that the slow reading results from the fact that these children do not 
build up an orthographic lexicon, a mental lexicon for words. Mm -hmm. This is why they sound out so slowly. And that doesn't seem to be true. It seems that even these slow readers do build, um, at least some of them, a subgroup of them, builds up orthographic uh, representations. They can spell the words, so they know what the word looks like. And they seem to have access problems. And that's another issue that uh, we're doing research on, because um, we want to know where these problems come from. And just to, just to follow up, so this is at the word level. It's not like they're poor comprehenders but can spell. No. This is really at the word level. That's word level, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Okay, great. Anything else? I think that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>